Hello everyone, welcome back to the series of lecture on actinide chemistry and uh, I would like to have some uh, recap of whatever we have learned in the previous lectures. So in the previous lecture we have uh, started with the actinide hydrolysis and uh, this is the general equation that I have given for the actinide hydrolysis and we have talked about this uh, tendency of hydrolysis is uh, dependent on the oxygen state. And we have seen that uh, oxygen state you can say plus 3, plus 4 and plus 6. As I have said that when we talk about plus 6 it is basically plus 3.3 and when we say plus 5 it is basically plus 2.2. So we have seen that uh, that uh, this oxygen state which are higher if they are having a hydrolysis in the range of near neutral pH whereas for the lower that is the plus 2.2 and their hydrosis will start at uh, <coughs> pH greater than 8. So we have also compared that uh, Hydrolysis is constant of uh, different uh, actinide ions compared to different oxygen state and uh, the trend is basically the tendency is very high the tetravalent followed by the hexavalent followed by trivalent and then pentavalent which is very much according to their chart that is 4 plus 3.3 plus 3 plus and 2.2 plus. So this is very much according to their charges and if we just compare the first hydrolysis constant of uh, different uh, oxygen state I have given you for the different metal and then uh, thorium and uranium. If you just compare the thorium K value is 10 to the power minus 2.5 and for uranium this is uh, 10 to the power minus 5.5. So we can say that it is having tendency to get hydrolyzed compared to the uranium and when you compare uranium and americium again it is almost 100 time more tendency of hydrolysis of uranium because of higher charge that is 3.3 .3 compared to 3 in the americium. The lowest possible is for neptunium which is having the lowest possible charge of 2.2 units and this is very weakly hydrolyzed and the pH we require for this kind of hydrolysis is generally more than 8 or so for the hydrolysis and then we have uh, seen that uh, how the trend of hydrolysis vary in uh, lanthanide series we have seen that uh, the lanthanide series that hydrolysis will start at a lower pH when we are moving that is because of the Zerbaya ratio or because of the higher ionic potential of the lanthanides when we are moving from the left to right we have also seen that uh, the <coughs> hydrolysis of the tetravalent ion they are forming some sort of polymers or we can say the polynuclear species in which you are having more than one metal ion and when we have tetravalent ion and they just precipitate into the solution, they just get hydrolyzed into the solution. These are called amorphous or freshly prepared precipitate. They are having mainly hydroxyl bridging, but the moment you leave it for some time, they are making kinds of compounds which are known as oxo bridge compounds, or you can say oxo bridge polymers. And these kind of polymers are very difficult to dissolve, and with aging, their stability is going to be increased. And the relative stability or you can say the inertness of these polymers towards the acid. When I say acid, as you have seen from the situation that suppose you just prepare a, a hydroxide and after the formation they are just prepared you add acid and from this equation you can get back your metal of interest. But if you leave it for a certain amount of time or maybe for uh, the kinetics of going from here to here is very slow so if we leave it for a good amount of time they are forming this kind of compounds and they are very difficult to dissolve and the difficulty will depend on the percentage of oxo bridging higher the oxo bridging more difficult is the polymer to dissolve or you can say more inert is the hydroxide polymer then we have also seen that how to get the composition or you can say the percentage of the hydroxyl species at a given pH if the log k values are known and with that we have seen that we have taken an example also with the log k value having assuming that it is the only monohydroxy complex and we have seen that if your pH is almost uh, one unit lower than the log k value in the positive sense because it is 10 so the 95 percent are present as free but when your pH is close to the log k value when I say close I am just assuming the 
positive charge and not resuming the negative and this is the 11.3 when you are in that range then we are assuming that for the monohydroxy if you are having this kind of range more than 50 percent of the total metal ion is free what it means that 50 percent is hydrolyzed and we have also seen that uh, this kind of speciation diagram and i requested you to try this diagram because uh, the two important things that you require for this diagram is the total metal concentration and the log k value that are already given here and you can just try to draw this diagram using this value and i've given you <coughs> example of neptunium here that i have discussed with the value of log k uh, minus 11.3 that <coughs> if you are having a ph of 11.3 then 50 percent is free and 50 percent is hydrolyzed but it means that before this ph that is ph 11.3 the system is dominated by the free metal ion and after this pH, the system is dominated by the hydroxyl complex. We have also shown you the, uh, the speciation diagram or the formation of hydroxyl species for amidition and the diagram is shown here. Here also you can see the tendency of formation of hydroxyl complex is more for amidition compared to the europium. Then this is for a uh, plutonium and uranium. So we have also discuss some concept that in assuming that that we have a concept of uh, pe that is very similar to the ph or analogous to the ph so you can say just as a ph is a measure of availability of proton but if we are having a concept or we are having some quantity which represent the availability of electron or is the measure of electron then we can just change the quantity and we can get idea about the redox behavior of the metal ion in the solution so as I have shown you that as pH is increasing, the proton availability is getting lower and lower. And when the pH is decreasing, the proton availability is getting higher and higher. In a very similar sense, suppose you have a variable called pe, and the, when the pe is increasing, we are having lower electron density. What it means that you are having a more and more oxidizing condition. And when the pe is getting lower, then you are having more and more electrons. What it means that you are having a reducing condition. So with this assumption that yes there is some variable called PE that will tell about the availability of electron. Here I just want to mention that the free electrons are not available. We are not directly measuring any concentration or any number of uh, free electron that are present. So this is not about the free electron but just let us just assume that there is some uh, concept uh, there is some variable that you can measure and you can correlate with the PE that will give you some indirect information about the condition whether the system is reducing or oxidizing. So we are having two kind of concept one is called uh, PE and one is called pH. So as I have shown you that for the pH you can always plot pH versus the fraction of hydrolyzed species or you can say and you will get some kind of curve in which you say the fraction is decreasing and hydrolyzed fraction is increasing. In a very similar case as I have shown you that suppose you have something called PE this is I have given you some redox reaction in which you assume that iron 3 plus is taking an electron and giving you iron 2 plus and <clears throat> you have pe you are somehow able to measure the pe value of your solution and you are able to vary that pe of your solution what will happen when your pe value is on the higher side but i mentioned that when your pe value is on the higher side when i say on the higher side these conditions are oxidizing in nature when your pe values are on the lower side the conditions are reducing in nature it is just like pH. When your pH value is on the higher side, means less proton availability. When your pH value is on the lower side, more proton availability. Similarly, when your P is on the lower side, more electron availability. And when your P is on the higher side, less electron availability. So based on this very simple concept, what we can say that if we can have P. So if we just try to see that how the redox potential is varying with respect to PE. You can see that when the conditions are oxidizing for the PE value is on the higher scale, you are getting iron 3 plus. And as we are moving in this line, the iron 3 plus is getting decreased and the formation of iron 2 takes place. So simply by having a variable that is similar to the pH, which is giving me information about the hydrolysis, I can get information about the different kind of retro species that is present with the system. So now the question arises, okay, we are having uh, two sets of information, then uh, what is called uh, pH, that is, you have a pH and then you can vary the pH and get the information about the hydrolysis species. 
and in a second set of experiment I can get the value of PE and by varying the PE I can get information about the redox species so we need two plot right but it is not true generally these two plots that is pH and EH they combine with each other to give only one plot and the plot looks like this this is one of the plot that I have taken from a review paper this is for Neptunium and here you can find certain lines certain regions and certain lines which are vertical horizontal or with some slope we will discuss about these lines and uh, how we can arrive on uh, this kind of line but <clears throat> in short I can say that this pH or PE curve or pH PE curve these are basically the stability field diagram they show how in a very comprehensive way your pH of the system and electrons simultaneously shift the equilibrium of reaction under various conditions it will also show you that under a given set of pH and PE which species will predominate so we will discuss uh, this diagram which is also known as Powerbox diagram in bit detail and after those discussion I will come back to this slide and then we will try to understand that uh, how we define this kind of line, why the lines are straight, why they are bent on by the different area, what does different area mean and why we are having this line, this boundary. That we will try to understand and then we will come back to this slide to understand what all these lines mean to us. So as I have said that uh, you cannot measure PE uh, directly but electrons are not available as such into the media. So you cannot measure them directly. But <clears throat> from our basic chemistry point of view, we all know certain relations, certain very basic relation that is delta G is equal to minus NP. That is the free energy relation with the reduction potential. We also know the Nernst equation e is equal to E0 plus 0 0.0595 divided by N log of oxidized species upon the reduced species. And from this very well known equation, we will try to derive this equation and we will try to understand what I mean by PE. And we will also see one term that is EH, but we will mainly try to understand what do I mean by PE. So, these are very known equations, and then we will try to deduce this equation of the PE from the known concept this we already know. <coughs> so, let us assume that an equation that uh, you have an exodized species that is a it takes a number of electron to give some kind of reduced species that is B and from the general chemistry point of view we can always write uh, some equilibrium constant for this reaction and the equilibrium constant for the reaction is simply this K into the reduced species divided by the oxidized and the electron and we just do some juggling mathematical juggling here and there and then we will find this term here what the this term is let us see what do we mean by ph ph is nothing but minus log of proton concentration or i can write ph is equal to log of 1 plus s plus so we are having 1 upon H plus notation kind of thing. Since I want to write PE, which is I want to put a similar concept like PH, I am having this 1 upon E. So this term I am already having, like 1 upon H, 1 upon E I am already having. But if I take a log of this equation, which I have done, so when you take log of this piece and uh, this equation, what we are ending is log of this quantity. This is very much similar to log of 1 point proton which is nothing but pH. So, this quantity is nothing but our PE and then we have other quantities that is already there and we have taken log and we can obviously arrange them. So, this quantity we have defined as PE. Now, the relation is like this that your PE is nothing but 1 upon n log k plus 1 upon n log of oxidized upon reduced species. Here I just want to mention that this log k and this ratio we are talking about the half cell reactions because we have started with this reaction. So this is the particular half cell reaction we are talking about that it takes electron and getting reduced to some form. So now let us assume that 
this is a constant because k is a constant and for a given reaction the number of electron let us assume one or two so if we assume that for a given reaction this as a constant which is given by p e naught so what we can write is nothing but p e is equal to p e naught plus one upon n log of oxidized species upon the reduced species and this we can write for any general equation having this kind of equilibrium then when your oxidation is there when your oxidized species takes the electron and gives some reduced species for this kind of half cell reaction we can write this kind of equation so now <coughs> the next equation we know is this one e is equal to n plus uh, 0.0592 divided by n log of the oxidized species upon the concentration of the reduced species and a very similar thing you can write for pe also you can see p is nothing but p naught plus 1 upon n log of oxidized upon reduced species here the term is given that is called eh if you compare these two equation if you compare these two equation and you try to find out then we find that there is a relation between pe and eh and the relation is nothing but f upon 2.3 rt and i have also shown you that uh, what we have assumed that log k divided by n which is a constant i have assumed it to be equal to p e naught and this log k is nothing but log k value of a reaction of a half cell reaction and this n is nothing but the number of electrons that are involved in that particular half cell reaction with this understanding let us try to get uh, this equation for a different kind of system or different kind of half cell reactions so these are several reactions are given you and uh, you can say this is a half cell reaction we have uh, 10 to the potentials and from there you can get the log k values i hope this is uh, not a very tedious task because you already know that uh, relationship of delta g with the electro potential you also know that uh, relation of uh, delta g with the rt and k and then you can easily work out on this and you can get relation between the log k and the standard reaction potential and uh, from here you can easily derive these values so <clears throat> for all these couples we can derive the log k values that are tabulated with respect to their standard electric potentials these uh, values are basically taken from the book that is the uh, aquatic chemistry from uh, Werner Stammen and Morgan so now suppose you have a system with this kind of equilibrium that iron 3 plus is going taking some electron some half cell reaction and uh, making some species that is iron 2 plus and i would like to ask that uh, what is the pe of this system suppose i know somehow the concentration of iron 2 and iron 3 in my system and i would like to ask what is the pe of this system the equation is very simple as i shown you that p is nothing but pe naught plus 1 by n log of oxidized species upon reduced species we have to find out pe value i have shown you that pe naught is nothing but log k upon n and from the previous table you can see that n for this reaction this reaction we are talking mainly so n is one oxidized species and reduced species concentration suppose you know you just simply put this value in this equation that p is nothing but pe naught which is coming 13 log of suppose you know this concentration you get an p value of 11.0 but from that you can compare the electron activity so you see that from this simple equation having some redox potential we have tried to find out the concentration you can see the activity of the electron in the media so this is not the direct electron that are in, involved in the media but there are certain redox reactions are there that are always happening in the media and because of those redox reaction there is always some some redox or oxidizing condition that are maintained into the media and we can always try to get pe corresponding to those equations if we know the concentration of those uh, oxidizer or reduced species we can do the reverse also suppose you know the pe in that case you can always calculate at least the ratio of the oxidized species to the reduced species now as we are talking about a media which is generally aqueous media in our case the water itself has tendency to get either oxidized to o2 or reduced to 
S2 <coughs> and here we have given the reaction of oxidation of water this is basically a reduction reaction but uh, this is basically <coughs> a reduction reaction and we have calculated the log k value and uh, this uh, PE naught which is obviously log k divided by n and since one electron is involved so it is the log k value so for this kind of reactions also what we can calculate is this kind of equilibria so when we talk about the water as a media what is the problem then when water is as a media and you are having some redox couple whose potentials are on a very higher side or on a very lower side in both the cases if the potentials of the couples are so that that they can oxidize water or you can say the water itself get oxidized because of electrons that are present in the media or from any other couple then you cannot work with the media so for water as a media we have certain limitation or rather we should say certain boundary condition under which we have to work and these boundary conditions are basically decided by two things one the oxidizing limit of the water second is the reducing limit of the water so when we talk about the oxidizing limit what we mean that water is getting oxidized to O2 when we talk about the reducing limit we say that water is getting reduced to the hydrogen <coughs> so this is the equation that is in the reduced form we have written for the oxidizing limit of uh, this uh, water media and we know this equation that P is nothing but P naught plus 1 upon n log of oxidized species upon reduced species and from this equation we can write all these components here and the PE value again we can get from the table that is 20.75 and the value of these other quantity except oxygen is assumed to be 1 proton you have to assume is like uh, this and then we will take log and this proton will become nothing but uh, pH and activity of uh, H2 is also assumed to be 1 and with this assumptions what we are getting this this is a linear equation PE is equal to 20.75 minus pH so if you compare it with the linear equation that is y is equal to mx plus t in which your y is nothing but your p scale and x is nothing but your p scale but you are getting a negative slope right so you are getting a negative slope like this similarly when you talk about the reducing limit you can write this equilibria and from this equilibria if we had another equilibria that is your hydroxyan combining with the proton to give you water molecule and when you club you are getting this equilibria and again for this particular equilibria what you have to do you have to just write the p equation that is p is equal to p naught plus 1 upon n log of proton upon hydrogen gas to the power 1 by 2 again <coughs> this if you see from the table is nothing but 0 so this value is 0 this you can always convert into the pH scale that is proton that is you can put always minus here and then power here and then you can always convert into the pH scale so here what we are getting is nothing but p is equal to minus of pH so here again if you compare y is equal to ms plus c c is not there so if you compare this y is equal to ms plus c where x is nothing but ph y is your p you are again getting a negative slope this is there so now this is my boundary why the boundary because if you are having a pe value above this range it can oxidize my water and if you are having a p value below this range it can reduce my water so i need to work for those system who is stable into the water medium or i can say the system which does not react with my solvent which does not make my solvent unstable so water as a medium and we to water as a medium we have to think of this boundary line so we are having two boundary lines uh, one is because of the oxidation of water and one is because of the reduction for the oxidation we are having this boundary line and for the reduction we are having this boundary line both are having a slope of minus one that we have seen this and this at the working limit into the aquatic media so now as i have shown you in the previous slide that there is some boundary so now we have some idea that why the boundary is and what is the concept of boundary 
now we'll try to learn about lines that why we are getting certain straight lines certain band lines or certain um, horizontal lines into the into our uh, PHPE diagram then we'll try to see okay <clears throat> so here I've taken a redox reaction in which uh, you have a uh, substrate ion reacting with proton some electron and giving you h is minus n 4 h 2 for this equation the log k value is 34.0 you have to set up the equation obviously our p p naught equation and from this equation if you try to add all these values that we are having what you will get p is nothing but 1 upon n log of k since there are 8 electrons so this is 8 this log k value is 34 so we are having 34 and this you are having 8 then if you plot this you for h you are having ph what you are left with these two you are getting this equation with these two what we assume that at a particular line that is there in the phpe diagram the concentration or the activity of these two ions are equal so when i assume the concentration or activity of these two species are equal what will happen they will be equal and assuming that they are equal, we will get this kind of equation and which can easily be plotted onto the graph. So, this line is shown here, here, this is the line which is shown. What is it? means that the activity of HS minus and SO42 minus is same on this line, right. So, you can see this is a slopey line. So, the slope means the equation contains both PE term and a pH term and PE term is basically electron activity, pH term is basically proton activity. So when you are having some sort of slope, some sort of slopey lines, it means that the reaction equilibria that we are talking about is controlled by both pH and PE. So your proton as well as electron both are influencing that particular equilibria. What about the straight lines? Let us see. Let us take a very simple example of uh, sulfuric acid or uh, sulfate plus proton which is giving you HS4 minus with a log k value of minus 2.0. So here since we are not having any electron, so we need not to set up the P equation but what we can easily write is the k. We can always write the k for this equation which is the sulfate proton and then uh, HS4 minus and since we are having log k value and we can just put this value and as I told you that uh, but we assume that that along this line the activities are same. So the moment you get this and you put the activity of this equal to activity of this but we are getting pH is equal to 2. When we say pH is equal to 2 and I have to plot on pH P diagram where pH is in the x axis and P e is on the y axis but we get a straight line that is falling on the pH scale. So, this kind of redox equilibria which are only controlled by the proton, they are giving you a straight vertical line. What about the redox system? When I say the redox system, suppose you have a certain redox system, as I have shown in the previous slide, that is iron 3 plus plus electron giving rise to iron 2 plus. Suppose you have this kind of equilibria in which only electron activity is to be mattered what kind of lines we are getting in this kind of system. I hope you can work easily for this kind of system and uh, you will get a horizontal line like this. Please try to work on this and uh, if any problem is there we can discuss. So we can, we know how these equations or how the factors that are controlling this equation will give different kind of line whether they are vertical, whether they are horizontal and some kind of slant line. With this understanding let us say, uh, this is one more example, I think you can easily work on that. Here I have shown you that uh, if the system also incorporates some solid species, how to work with that. So I think you can easily work on that. So now with this understanding that uh, we are having three kind of line, that is some are horizontal lines, some are vertical lines, some are slopey lines, what information we can get. So let us try to see the simple graph of Neptunium, that is this one. And we say Neptunium, it is always NP2 plus. We start with not this because we are in the Porvex diagram, so oxygen states will keep on changing. So I should not say like it is this. 
it is an FQNM only because <coughs> I have not specified the thing state. So in this simple diagram, the first thing you can see the slant lines, two lines. That they have already seen that this is the limits because of the medium. Out of this, it will be having some oxidizing nature, it will be having a reduce. So water it will get water itself will get oxidized on above this and get reduced below this. So we have to work in this and you can see this limit is in the all diagrams because they all are plotted into the water media and if you see the equation here that water is going to O2 and water is getting to O2. and I found the equations also for this is nothing but pH is equal to minus P E and for this for the top one is like P is equal to 20.75 minus pH. So you have equations for these lines. So now we know about these lines. Now we are having certain vertical signs. What the vertical lines mean? As I've shown you in the example where I'm talking about the dissociation, or you can say the combination of sulfate and with the protons, where we are getting HS4 minus, we have seen we are getting certain straight line. So we have seen there this equilibria is totally dependent on the so when the equilibrium is totally dependent on proton or you can say the two species are mainly dependent on each other with respect to the protons and there is no change in the oxygen state then we are getting this kind of state line so here we see neptune is plus 5 here you see neptune is also plus 5 but the difference in the species is because of the involvement of the proton so it is carbonated it is not carbonated because we are having different ph what about this red line Plus lines are mainly controlled by the electron activity or you can say E. So here if you see the species are almost same but the oxygen states are very different. Here we are talking about the pentavalent or you can say NPO2 plus and here it is becoming tetravalent. And slant line as I have said that they are dependent on both pH as well as the electron activity into the medium. So with this basic idea that how the pH and electron activity will control my equilibria, we can do this kind of diagram and in this kind of diagram we can get all the information in one diagram that how my pH and P of the system is changing my equilibria for both my radius equilibria as well as my chemical equilibria and here also I just want to mention one thing that uh, if you see there are certain areas which are having different colors so again if we take the example of neptunium you can see this area is almost everywhere this is one color area then this the second one is this one and the third one is this one what it says that the stability of a particular oxygen state in this working range so you can say that in this particular working range the stability of neptunium 5 is very high so if you are maintaining somehow this kind of condition of ph and p you will always bound to get neptunium 5 whereas if you are changing the PE value, you may reach to this, which is the green one where neptunium 4 is predominant. So just by playing PE and pH of the media and by seeing this diagram, you can always tell under what condition my neptunium 4 will be predominant and under what condition my neptunium 5 will be predominant. And the higher the area, obviously, higher is the stability of that particular uh, species. So we have discussed about the Quarkach diagram and what we mean by this horizontal, vertical or uh, floppy lines and we have also seen that uh, how one can draw this kind of diagram using uh, very normal chemistry or very simple equations that I have shown you and I would like to request you that uh, you try these equations to draw by yourself and you can take certain other equilibria also certain uh, pure equilibria in which you can have the reaction dependent on either proton or electron or certain reactions in which both are playing a role and you will try to draw this PHP diagram that will give you an idea about uh, the stability fields of that particular species that you are interested in. So with that, uh, thank you, thank you very much.